Hello, today I'm going to talk about an approach to skin cancers. My name is Sukhmeet Rohan Sachal, and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of British Columbia. I made this video with Dr. Janine Roller, a plastic surgeon who trained at the University of British Columbia. Today we will review three types of skin cancers, their characteristics, risk factors, workup, and management. Skin cancer is the abnormal growth of skin cells. The three most common types of skin cancer are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. BCC and SCC are collectively known as non-melanoma skin cancer. When a patient comes in for a consult, you want to ask the following on history. For instance, how long the lesion has been there, if there are any associated symptoms such as bleeding or pruritus, and how it has changed over time. Specifically, also ask how much has it grown. It is also important to know if the patient has had previous skin cancers, the type, location, and how they were managed. Then review family history, and if indicated, screen for genetic conditions such as Gorlin syndrome, albinism, or xeroderma pigmentosum. Ask regarding any B symptoms and for any signs or symptoms of metastasis. Review the patient's history of radiation and whether they are immunosuppressed, which increases the risk of cutaneous malignancies. After a thorough history, continue with the physical examination. Examine the size, location, and other characteristics that we will discuss that are specific to each type of skin cancer. Perform a full skin check for concerning lesions and assess for any lymph adenopathy. If the lesion is concerning, a, bi a biopsy is indicated, and based on the pathology, a metastatic workup may be indicated. The management of the biopsy-proven skin cancer depends on the skin cancer type and the presence of any high-risk features. Let's start off with basal cell carcinoma, also known as BCC which is the most common type of skin cancer and are typically located on sun-exposed parts of your body. The likelihood of BCC to metastasize is least likely compared to other skin cancers. Common characteristics of BCCs include lesions that are present as a pink papule, plaque, or nodule with pearly rolled borders, surrounding telangiectasia, and central ulceration or crusting. Risk factors for developing BCC can be divided into internal risk factors, which are factors that you cannot change, and external risk factors, which rely on your environment. Some internal risk factors include your skin type, which is classified by the Fitzpatrick scale. This scale is based on your skin color, hair color, and how easily the patient burns or tans. Fair skin, red or blonde hair, and light eye color are more susceptible to UV damage. The next is settings of immunosuppression, such as organ transplantation and long-term use of sorolin and UVA light, which increases the incidence of BCC. For instance, patients who have had organ transplants have an approximately 5 to 10-fold higher incidence of BCC than the general population. Your age is another internal risk factor. The older you are, the more likely you are to develop skin cancers. This has to do with the amount of radiation exposure. And finally, genetic syndromes such as Gorlin syndrome can be associated with multiple BCCs. External risk factors include your exposure to sunlight, which includes UVA and UVB, as well as ionization radiation. There are multiple types of BCC shown here. The most common subtype is nodular BCC, which accounts for about 50 to 60%. There are many mimickers that can look like BCC that can be broken down into benign neoplasms, inflammatory lesions, and other malignant tumors. A biopsy-proven BCC skin can be managed in several ways. The mainstay of treatment is surgical wide local excision with margin to result in a 98% disease-free rate at 5 years. The margin of healthy tissue that is excised around the lesion depends on if the lesion is low risk or high risk. Low-risk lesions are typically a primary lesion with well-defined borders and a nodular subtype. If these lesions are less than 1 cm on the cheek, forehead, or scalp, or less than 2 cm on the trunk and extremities, a margin of 3 to 4 mm can be used. For high-risk lesions, they require larger margins, typically 5 mm. 
This is indicated for BCCs of larger size, other subtypes, if they're recurrent, have poorly defined borders, or have evidence of perineural or lymphovascular invasion. Another treatment is Mohs micrographic surgery, which can be indicated for high-risk BCCs as it allows for intraoperative analysis of 100% of the excision margin. The indications for Mohs is listed on the right. Curatage and electrodesiccation is a process of alternatively scraping away tumor tissue with a curec down to a firm layer of normal dermis and denaturing the area by electrodesiccation. This is used for low-risk tumors only. Another form of treatment is radiation, which may be used if a patient cannot undergo a surgery or if re-excision cannot be tolerated by the patient or cannot be performed given the location. Lastly, superficial therapies can be used, including topical therapies, cryosurgery, where the lesion is cooled to negative 40 degrees with repetitive cycles, and photodynamic therapy. Let's move on to our next type of skin cancer, squamous cell carcinomas, also known as SCC, which are the second most common type of skin cancer and have become destructive to deeper tissues and are more likely to metastasize. The most frequent clinical presentation of SCC is an erythematous scaly patch or a slightly elevated plaque, which are commonly ulcerated, well-defined, and can be papillonodular, papillomatous, or exophytic. A patient's internal risk factors for developing a SEC include the patient's skin type, such as Fitzpatrick types 1 and 2, immunosuppression, and several genetic syndromes. External risk factors include cumulative sun exposure, carcinogen exposure such as pesticides, viral infections such as HPV or herpes simplex, radiation, and chronic wounds, which can give rise to a margillin ulcer, which is a subtype of a SEC. For the treatment of SECs, several options exist. Surgical wide local excision gives a 95% cure rate. The surgical margins are generally between 4 to 6 millimeters. Overall, lesions less than 2 centimeters can be removed with a 4 millimeters margin, and lesions that are greater than 2 centimeters or high risk should be removed with 6 millimeters to 1 centimeter margins. For large lesions, frozen sections can be used. However, this can result in false negative results. Another type is Mohs micrographic surgery, which can also be used for the same indications as we discussed with the BCCs. Radiation can also be used for patients who are not surgical candidates or for adjuvant therapy. Chemotherapy is also uh, usually only used for adjuvant therapy. And lastly, destructive treatments such as ED and C and cryosurgery can be used for small or superficial lesions, but these do not provide a specimen to confirm the lesion has been fully excised. Therefore, these methods are not commonly used. Now let's move on to our last type of skin cancer, melanoma, which is a tumor that results from the malignant transformation of melanocytes or neural crest cells as a result of DNA damage triggering mutations that can lead to uncontrolled cellular growth. While it is less common than BCC and SCC, melanoma is most likely to metastasize and is responsible for approximately 50% of deaths related to skin cancer. The risk in males is slightly higher than females, and the median age of diagnosis is around 59 years old. While melanoma can arise in many locations, it is commonly found on the lower extremity of women and on the trunk in men. Similar to how we discussed with BCC and SEC, there are many risk factors that can help predispose someone into developing single or multiple primary melanomas. One of them is a male sex, um, as well as personal or family history of melanoma. Individuals who are over the age of 60 years old are more likely as well to have an increased risk of developing melanoma. People who have personal traits such as increased mole count and or dysplastic nevi tendency to sunburn, red hair, blue eyes, Fitzpatrick skin type 1, people with uh, weakened immune systems and immunosuppression, and multiple and or blistering sunburns are also more predisposed to developing melanomas. Individuals who have genetic predispositions 
and environmental factors such as tanning bed views and residence in sunnier climate or latitude near the equator and intermittent intense sun exposure or chronic sun exposure. An easy way to remember the common characteristics of melanoma is the ABCDEs. The lesion is likely to be asymmetric with an irregular shape or parts of the lesion that look different. The borders are likely irregular. The color may be uneven or changed over time. The size or diameter is likely larger than the size of a pea. And the evolution of the lesion has changed recently. There are multiple melanoma subtypes. The most common is superficial spreading melanoma, which accounts for 70% of melanomas. Nodular melanomas are the second most common and usually appear as eroded or bleeding with an exophytic brown-black color. Lentigo maligna melanoma arises from a lentigo maligna on the sun-damaged face of seniors. And lastly, Acral lentiginous melanoma occurs on the palmar or plantar surfaces as well as subunguli. On workup, review the standard skin care history questions including reviewing melanoma risk factors. Perform a full physical examination and feel for any lymph adenopathy in the region. Investigations include doing a biopsy of the lesion. Important features on pathology to review are the Breslau thickness, the presence of ulceration, mitotic rate, and if there is any lymphovascular or perineural invasion. There are two scales that describe the depth of the melanoma. Breslau depth is the measurement in millimeters from the surface of the skin to the deepest component of the melanoma. This is the measurement that is used to determine stage 1 to 4, which aids in a 5-year survival rate, surgical margins, and aids in the decision on if a sentinel lymph node biopsy should be offered. The other scale is a Clark level, which is another system for describing how deep skin cancer has spread into the skin in levels 1 to 5. The treatment of primary melanoma consists of a wide local excision. The melanoma Breslau depth dictates the margin of normal tissue to be included in the excision. The excision should go down to, but not including, the fascia. The patient should also be referred to the local cancer agency where alternative treatments and medical treatments can be reviewed. And unlike with BCC and SCC, radiation is not typically used for melanoma management. For wide local excision, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network uses the Breslau thickness to determine the surgical margins and if a sentinel lymph node biopsy is indicated. Using the table on the right, it shows that if the patient has a melanoma in situ, excise the melanoma with 5 mm up to 1 cm margins. If the Breslau thickness is less than 1 mm, excise the melanoma with 1 cm margins. If the Breslau thickness is greater than 1 mm up to 2 mm, excise with 1 to 2 cm margins. Greater than 2 mm, the recommended margins are 2 cm. A sentinel lymph node biopsy can be considered when the Breslau thickness is between 0.8 and 1 mm thickness with signs of ulceration on the biopsy. Follow-up typically involves a family doctor or dermatologist performing a skin exam at the time intervals listed here which is broken down by the skin cancer type. If the patient is at high risk or low risk for recurrence, if regional disease is present or by melanoma stage. Education about sun safety and protective measures should also be mentioned at each follow-up. These are the listed references used in this presentation. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation.